The opinions expressed on the Custody Queen Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal, professional legal advice. The persons discussed are fictional and not based on actual clients. Thought it was love, had kids in between. You can count on us, we're the Custody Queens. Yeah, you can count on us, we're the Custody Queens. Welcome back, Custody Queen family. I'm Sam McBride. I'm here with Kristen Holstrom, and we have a very exciting show for you today. I'm going to pass it over to Kristen to introduce our very special guest. Hey everyone, I hope you are enjoying this Saturday morning because we have a real treat for you today. We have Tyler Gray, who is an actor, director, and producer from SEAL Team. And everybody listening knows how much I love SEAL Team. So we're super excited to have Tyler on with us today. Ah, thanks for having me. Sam, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about Tyler's bio that we know and then we can ask him some questions. Oh. Okay, well, Kristen, starting off Saturday, putting me in the hot seat. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, from what I understand, Tyler, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, before you were kind of in the SEAL team industry, you were a ranger. And you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, so I was in uh, Army Special Operations my whole military career. Um, first... Uh, half was spent uh, as a ranger, uh, most of that time spent as a sniper, and then the second half of my career was spent uh, at a special operations unit in the Army, which is similar to, or technically the sister unit of the one we portray on the show. That's incredible. And that, that I'm sure provides you with such good real life experiences and helps you in the show. Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, it, it can't be uh, overstated how much, you know, um, experience and material you have to draw from, not just in, in telling stories, but also in, uh, you know, being on camera or, or directing, you know, it's, um, it's invaluable to, to the, and, and, and I bet, I mean, I, I really have no acting experience at all, but you know, Kristen and I were talking about this before the show. And when we watch legal related shows, there's some shows that were like, you're almost exactly spot on, and then some. You're like, I can't, I can't even follow it at all. So, yeah, I, I think can't that's say great. how many times we've told a client it's not like TV with respect yeah. to a law show. You know, the judge doesn't bang a gavel. Uh, it, it's just so different. Cross examination, direct testimony. It's it, it's so different on TV. But I think that SEAL Team is actually contrary to that. Uh, and one of the things that I read and that I previously previously discussed with Tyler is. What makes SEAL Team so great is that they didn't start with the actors. They started with the foundation. They started with getting people like Tyler with the nine years of experience in military. They got past frogmen, right? Right? Yeah, the, I mean, the fundamental uh, reason, and there's many, which I'll talk about, but you know, at, at its core, um, the executive producer, so the, or one of, there's many, but, um, the show was originally based on the kind of story of Mark Owen, uh, who, who wrote the book, uh, No Easy Day. So, you know, it was him and, and Chris Chulak, who's, uh, also the executive producer directed, um, you know, most of the episodes. And so that was, that was the initial core was those two. So you had a Hollywood, you know, person, I mean, Chris directed and, you know, he was a producer on ER. I mean, he's done a, a million things. Um, but you had a Core guy from SEAL team or, you know, from actually the unit that's portrayed on the show um, at the very top from the very beginning. Um, and then, you know, it, it just spread from there. And uh, he's the one who actually called me and brought me in. Um, but they put them together, put everything else together based on um, what they felt would work the best. Well, I think they've done a wonderful job even looking back from, from you know, we're in season five now and looking back to one, just the progress and the experience and the training, it shows. And the way that, that you guys built the show, that's kind of the way Sam and I like to tell all of our listeners, when, when we help people, it's so much more important to hire the attorney, come up with a strategy, come up with a long-term plan than it is to 
to basically go do something and see if it works. Right. And I think what you guys have done makes it so much better than so many other military shows out there. Because when you start with the actors, but you don't have the training, the knowledge, the education, it, it really is just TV. Yeah, and, and you know, they also did a great job of, of hiring um, actors who, you know, were just um, excited to portray the world as, as authentically as possible, you know, and, and that's, again, cannot be overstated. Um, if you get, you know, an actor that just really doesn't, it's a part to them and they don't really care about, you know, who they're portraying or whatever, they won't listen to anything. Um, but, you know, from everyone that was brought on to SEAL Team, um, they're all so concerned about getting it right. Um, and, and, and actually even going beyond the actors, everyone on the show is, you know, whether it's cast or crew, um, everyone feels the level of importance uh, in portraying anything in the military as accurately as possible. And that, you know, if there's any one factor that makes the show what it is, I would say it's that. It's that everyone from the top down cares. And I would agree with you. Um, you know, I, I follow a lot of, of the cast on social media because what I am so impressed with the show is the education it provides to all of us civilians. You know, I think to a lot of us, we all know what a SEAL team member is theoretically, but to understand what these families go through, what these SEAL team members go through, how much training, knowledge, education, skills, I mean, you guys are able to pretty much do anything. And I I just, I think it's the education it's providing the public about, you know, mental health and some of the issues with the veterans, the clinic. You know, I didn't really know how bad the healthcare was until I started seeing some of these things play out. And that's what I think your show does does so much for the, the public. It really brings a lot of education to us. I, you know, the, the biggest thing that, um, you know, in reference to, to SEAL Team and, you know, what I've always said is, is the show called SEAL Team? Yeah, it's about a SEAL Team. Again, it's TV. They're not going to make a show about, you know, uh, a water filter specialist, you know, team. It's just, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be TV-ish. But through a SEAL Team, um, what we're really doing is not telling SEAL stories. We're not telling Navy stories. We're telling universal military stories through the conduit of this SEAL team. And on another level, universal military stories are really universal human stories. Mm -hmm. It's all about struggle, loss, and you know, things that everyone right. deals with. So um, I, I'm really happy that, that when we've been able to contrast the action um, kind of with that education component. Yeah, no, I think you guys do a really good job with still making it TV and drama, but also tying it into real life issues that people go through. Uh, you know, that with Tony Trucks and uh, the discrimination that was played on a few of the episodes that, that women face and, and men too. But again, another real life issue that you guys tie in so easily, or it looks very easy, but I, I, I it's kind of funny. I tell everybody that will listen, you know, I was just talking to our receptionist and I said, I just met her for the first time today. And I said, do you watch SEAL Team? No. Oh, you, you need to. You need to. Uh, Tyler Gray is going to be here today. But it's and it's one of those where I, I hadn't even started watching it. I think I saw a couple of commercials and in my head I was like, oh, I, I need to put that on my list. And you were halfway into season two and it was raining one weekend. And uh, I literally I'm a Scorpio. So I love my alone time. I binge watched like 18 shows in yeah. like two days. It, it's, it's clearly, it's no secret that Kristen is a super fan, a super, super fan. So she's been binge watching for some time. I have recently been catching up and I have to say, it is not hard to binge watch this. It is so fun. But what occurred to me in watching these episodes is really, there is just so much going on in every episode, at least from someone that has no military training or background. And I was wondering, I know you probably can't give me an approximate average, but like, how long does it take to shoot an episode? Uh, well, seven to eight days would be the, the short wow. version. Yeah. Um, we used to shoot eight, now we shoot seven. Um, but it's, I mean, the amount of, you know, you figure it takes seven or eight days to shoot 
um, with commercials, you're you're looking at a 42 minute runtime. Right. So 42 so, mics, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. I am totally up. You're on it. You're on yeah, it. yeah. Charlie Lima, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> there were times where I've actually been watching a show, and then I'll go Google, you know, what what is mic? What is this? You know, but I, my military lingo has progressed. Well, it, it's funny because in every script, I don't have one here, but in every script, there is a glossary of terms in the beginning. And I think season one, it was like maybe a page, maybe two. And I think now it's like five because <laughs> right. we just right. keep adding terms. Okay. And... What is Havoc? What is what does that stand for? I know it's something with command, but what is it? Yeah. So Havoc is just the call sign for the talk, okay. essentially. And we, you know, there's so many things that you, you change and you have to make a decision on. And, and originally we were calling it talk. And we were like, you know, you, you'd call it by a call sign. So yeah. then we're like, all right, let's just give it a call sign. And people over time, you know, will we'll know that that's obviously talk if we keep that call sign the same. But uh, yeah, everything generally over the radio would have a call sign. So you don't know what they actually are. Yeah. If, if somebody was listening. I, I learned I learned a lot of them. I was actually, you know, quizzing Sam this morning. But for everyone, you know, that's out there and, and you're listening, again, I just want to just really emphasize what this show is. And there's a lot of, you know, crappy TV out there. And I am not going to lie. I watch, you know, some, <laughs> some mind numbing uh, shows that I will not actually admit. But, you know, just kind of to make me feel better about my life. But what SEAL Team... <laughs> we all have those, Christy. You know, I, I think Love After Lockup might be one of them. Um <laughs> But what this show does, it goes through so many real life issues that not only me personally, but you know, a neighbor, a friend, but a lot of our clients, you know, going through a family law case, going through a custody case, we deal with a lot of mental health issues. We deal with a lot of depression. We have a lot of clients that are in the military, um, men and women that either come back and they have to kind of regroup and figure out how, how their family unit's gonna work again. Um, or if the marriage didn't survive deployment, we deal with a lot of those issues. So I really suggest, you know, over the holidays when you have some time off that you go to Paramount Plus, you get your subscription, and I'm telling you, it is so easy to binge watch. I kind of felt like a little bit of a wacko at like two in the morning going, just one more episode, like just one more. <laughs> because the episodes are, they have brought tears to my eyes. They have brought, you know, the biting on the pillow, but I can relate to a lot of the issues that they portray and, and the education that they provide, which is so relevant to everything that's going on right. in the world right now. You know, it, it just, I cannot suggest it enough. So Tyler, how'd you get into acting? Um, that, that's a great question. So, um, you know, when I first came out to, to Hollywood, um, which, which I should probably preface um, this whole thing by when I was a kid, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to be in the military, actually Army specifically, uh, and two, I probably watched Rambo like 400 times. <laughs> um, and number two, I, I wanted to work in, you know, film, uh, really film, which is now, you know, TV as well. But I wanted to work in entertainment because I would watch those films. I mean, I'm a Star Wars fanatic. Um, awesome. <laughs> I've seen Star Wars more times than I've seen Rambo, and that's saying something. <laughs> but, um, I've seen both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, but So it's one of those things where those were the two things as a kid that, you know, I used to watch films at, you know, I don't know, seven years old and, like, really kind of pick them apart. Right. Why are they good? You, you know, and um, so when I got, you know, um, I got wounded overseas and I got medically retired, you know, what am I going to do? Well, I'll, I'll go do the next thing I want to do as, as a kid. So that's what brought Very me cool. into the industry. Um, and then obviously, what was I qualified to do? Well, really only be a tech advisor because <laughs> I didn't have any other skills. Um, so when I started working as an advisor, what I figured out very quickly is, so everything in Hollywood is unions. Right. Everything. There's only two people not in a union on a set. One is uh, a PA, and the other is an advisor. <laughs> so are those SAG and AFTRA? Or AFTRA? Um, well, so SAG-AFTRA is one, which is the Actors Guild. 
Um, you got the Directors Guild, the Producers Guild, you've got, uh, you know, the IOTC, which is like all, I mean, there's a million different, everyone has a guild, camera, you know, set uh, deck, like it, everyone has uh, their own guild and then they kind of fall into these bigger chunks. But as an advisor, there is no guild for his advisors. There's no, so essentially I would work on these projects and one in particular I worked on for like a month and one of the actors came on for like a day and made more in a day than I did in a month. Right. Working was that on the this. selection on the History Channel? No, no, this was actually a, a movie way back in like 2010, I think. And uh, I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be an actor. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, I was like, all right, that's, um, all right, I need to figure this out. So I essentially got, um, my buddy actually gave me my first, uh, I was doing this stunt thing for him and he's like, oh, uh, man, and it was my birthday, and he's like, uh, we need you to say a line here. And it was a, like a radio call. It's very simple. And I was like, I wasn't prepared to say it. You know, I'm like, oh, my God, I wasn't. You know, I, I know. need at least a week's notice. I, I literally, you know, and I'm like, oh. So I just kept doing it, kept doing it, and it was horrible. Um, I didn't know it was horrible because I didn't know what good or bad was at that time. Uh, and then finally he goes, you know, just relax with it. And I'm like, okay. So then I'm sitting there in the room before I had to come out on camera and I was just like, it's a radio call. How should I, like before I was like, how should I act a radio call? <laughs> I naturally how, do this. Yeah, and then I was just like, how, how should I? I'm like, oh my God, I've done like a billion radio calls, you, you know, like oh, yeah. in real life. So I was like, oh, I'll just try it that way. Yeah. So then I came out and just did it as if I was, you know, done it a million times. And he's like, great, moving on. And I'm like, uh, and, God, and then yeah. you get bigger and bigger parts. Well, yeah, Kristen and yeah. I can relate to that a lot because we're attorneys, so we're public speakers. We're in courtrooms day in and day out, and we started the show, and we we're like, "What? Wait, what <laughs> do we do? Do we talk in yeah. closely? I, what do we? I don't know what to do. <laughs> do with we stop my hands? at a certain point? Where do I look? Yeah, we're like <laughs> a little over one year anniversary of doing the show, and. Um, we, that first day I was like, oh, I'm a great talker. I talk all the time. I'm a litigator, you know, I'm friendly. And then they put the headsets on us and we were like, hi, Sam, it's Kristen. <laughs> and, and it took How us are you five hours to shoot, yeah. you know, a 28 minute show. Yeah, bless our production team. Yeah. We were here for <laughs> three and, days you know, to shoot four minutes. <laughs> and now I sometimes I think, oh, we're getting a little overconfident because we'll just say things. I was like, oh, did I really say that on the show? But it's just become so natural and similar, you know, going into court my first time, I sat on the wrong side of the bench. Uh, you know, I looked like I was right out of Legally Blonde and the bailiffs, you know, thought I was a court reporter and I was shaking when I talked. And, you know, now you walk in like you own the place. Right. So confidence, you know, comes with time. But I, a little fun fact about me is I was a little bit of a child actor. Um, I did a movie called Elvis and Me when I was like, I want to say 10 and I played, um, Elvis Presley's wife or Priscilla Presley's sister. So I had a couple scenes we filmed in Canada um, and then I did a bunch of commercials, uh, you know, international commercials. One was called a, a Crest commercial and I had finally been made it to like, you know, the triple callback and it was me and another girl and you were supposed to have this nice pearly white set of teeth. Well, I got the part and two days before we were filming, I was wrestling with a friend of mine and her brother had kicked out my two front teeth. Oh. <laughs> and so the production team ended up rewriting the commercial. So at the end, I smiled and had no two front teeth. <laughs> um, so it's kind of funny. I know a little bit about the acting world. And, and I had told Sam a year ago, I said, you know, somehow I think I'm going to get on SEAL team. I, I'm going to be a dead body. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be, you know, a floozy at the bar. I said, I, you know what? I, I be a killer CIA agent. And so all these people have laughed at me. And I was like, don't underestimate me. Hey. So we're super happy to have you here. Yeah, no, it's, it's great to be here. And, you know, going back to what you said, it's uh, confidence you know if you do anything with enough confidence that's about half of like you can get away with more than like knowing like mm -hmm. that confidence initially you can fake it through until you learn it which that's how i learned acting i just was like i have no idea what i'm doing but <laughs> We're gonna i'm gonna go for it. i'm gonna Let's keep going out. yeah we'll, we'll see what happens so. yeah well and as you know, I've been watching season five. I see you have a lot more talking parts. Like, yeah. I'm like, wow, he's like really, really growing into this really good actor. 
I it's well, you know, after four years watching all the other actors, I, I should have picked up something by now. Um, but yeah, it's a very strange thing. Um, it's hard to explain, but you know what I like. I, I didn't go into this industry with the intent of acting, um, but now having done it, having you know directed, which is my main thing, I love, but. Everything that you do, like acting, what I actually fundamentally love is storytelling. And part of storytelling, ultimately, whatever is written, whatever is directed, the story is at its very end told on, you know, by and on the faces of the actors. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like the last step of the storytelling. And so I really like that piece where you get to do, you know, even if I'm directing the episode, when I'm acting, I get to tweak it put a little bit and it. put my spin on it, which is, it's really cool. Cause I know you had your directorial debut. Um, I believe it was season three, episode 10, Unbecoming of an Officer. Yes, that is correct. Nailed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually, I went back and watched that. Sam and I were both watching it and um, I think directing is your is your passion, right? Is that uh, your ultimate yeah. passion? Absolutely, absolutely. It's um, it it's just it's impossible to explain, but the way I'll try is that it it's you're essentially when you're directing, it's like you're editing the show you're watching as you go. Because you watch a take and then you go, Okay, I wanna tweak that in these ways and then you give notes and then you get to see what you just changed. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's so creative. I, and you're I, seeing each part come to light. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I mean, you're, you, you are, as a director, you are the, it, what I call the visual interpreter of the writer. Yeah. You know, because it's written, but you have to visually interpret that. And um, it's just a, uh, it is, it's a team sport, directing is, and I love working with you know, it's really managing a bunch of experts to uh, all come together to cohesively tell a great story. And I absolutely love it. Yeah, the way that you describe that, it's a lot of what Sam and I do as being a lawyer. Like clients will come in and they will tell us their story and they will provide us the facts. But being, you know, attorneys, as good as we are, and I have no problem saying that because we are that good, <laughs> but we have to pull apart the pieces of your story and present them in a manner that the judge can not only comprehend, but that he can see what's really going on. Because what a lot of attorneys do out there is they just, you know, throw out every fact. They don't know if it's true. They don't do their own fact gathering. You know, clients lie sometimes, or they may not tell us the whole story. So Sam and I are infamous for, okay, and how do you know that? Okay, and were you there? And that's a lot of what you're doing is directing. And with Custody Queens, we now have a team of I, I get close to over 10 attorneys. And Sam and I get to kind of d train them, educate. And so I get a little feeling of the directing that you're describing. And I love it too. It's kind of like seeing attorneys come into their own. And being a new attorney, Oh, confidence is 90% yeah. of the When matter. you're a new attorney, I, I was like, where do I staple this document? I don't know what to do. But then you start to grow this confidence over time and then it becomes fun. Like mm -hmm. it really does. After a while, you start to realize how the process, how the legal, like the code falls in with the facts and how you can present it in such a way that you can get a favorable ruling. So Tyler, other than filming SEAL Team, which sounds like it is quite the process, Absolutely. how long do you guys actually film for through the year? Uh, uh, well, it depends, um, you know, on CBS season one through three, well, pretty much three, was uh, 22 episodes, so that was about 10 months of filming. Wow. Um, then into season three was COVID, so that kind of threw things off for four, you know, you know it's been a little uh, different since. Yeah. I think we've done 14 episodes. 14 new episodes season four and five so yeah you had a lot of uh unhappy fans when we only got 17 episodes and it's kind of funny reading the comments like people really take it very very seriously um but what other than seal team have you been a part of Are there any other shows oh um uh i well i did a show called the selection that was on uh history channel um can't think of the year offhand, but um, but it's a funny one because I, I still get uh, 
you know, messages uh, about that show. And, and I'm very proud of it. I thought we did. Um, I, again, that was a show where, uh, for anyone not familiar, we took, I want to say 30 or 40 um, just civilians and put them through a, uh, either a 10 or a 12 day, again, I can't remember, uh, 10 or a 12 day, you know, selection process, which was based on really a little bit of every uh, special operations unit. It had a little bit of I seal, don't think last green bread. It was, uh, <laughs> it, it was uh, I, I can say without question, every single person uh, that took part in it, you know, learned a lot about themselves. And, uh, and hopefully a lot of the people that, that watch the show learned uh, a lot about, you know, themselves the process, as well. And yeah. uh, no, I was, I was really proud of that show. I think it, uh, you know, again, it's, it's what can happen when, you know, from the very beginning you say, look, we're not gonna, all of us, all of the cadre on it, all of us got together and said, if they ever tell us what to say, we'll walk. If they ever tell us what to do, we'll walk. And we told the network, like, if you ever try and manufacture anything, we're done. I love that. It's I love that it's cool. not scripted and it has the true authenticity. And and there is not a single thing said in that entire show that was scripted. told to be said or nothing. It was all organic. And, uh, um, and I'll be fair, there was only one thing that... The network did say, and uh, we almost walked because of it, and I'll admit, in hindsight, they were right. Um, which was uh, day two, we had them in the water, like in the ocean, and it was nighttime, and I think we planned to keep them out there like another five hours. <laughs> Doing like a buds, you know, yeah, like a, a yeah, little bud yeah. seal training in San Diego? Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and they were... Uh, the network's like, I forget how many people had quit, but they're like, you guys got to stop. You guys got to stop. We'll, we'll lose everyone. And we're like, no, they're fine. <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 you got to cut it. And then uh, uh, Bert, who was kind of the acting medic at that time, he like, when we we're talking about it, we were pretty upset. We're like, we said, <laughs> Bert goes and like, what looks at their faces all and comes back and goes, if we keep going, we'll, we'll literally have no show. every song, everyone. He's like, they're right. They'll all quit right now. <laughs> and we're like, whoa, whoa geez. And, and we didn't even think the water was cold. We're like, ah, oh, you know. So. You guys are of a different breed. I, I was reading Robert O'Neill's book, um, you know, and he it spends a very good chunk of the book. Uh, who's a past seal talking about the training in the water it buds and i'm like i don't know that i could look at the ocean the same <laughs> you know that's really funny because i'll tell you all seals will tell you that they hate the ocean like they hate AJ the water. Buckley specifically <laughs> all, no the, but they'll also oh i hate i hate i hate the beach i hate that yet they all live by the beach <laughs> <laughs> well it's like sam all and i we played division one soccer but I mean, she like i hate running i hate running why oh, did i, I love a sport that Involves running. Yeah, you're weird. <laughs> I love to run. Well, Tyler, we have to wrap it up for the first episode with you on us. But for everybody listening, on all of our fans on Go Country 105, uh, you can actually watch this video on Custody Queens on Air. Uh, it is also on all of the podcast platforms. And you can also uh, listen to these shows, again, if you if you want, on custodyqueensonair.com. We will be having a part two with Tyler Gray because we have been having so much fun talking about SEAL Team and directing and being authentic and genuine. Absolutely. And remember, everyone, if you have questions or want to give us a call, please do so at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. And Tyler, if any of our fans um, want to follow you on social media, can you share with us what your Instagram is? Uh, sure. It's uh, Tyler A. Gray, Gray, G-R-E-Y, uh, on Instagram. Cool, and uh, we will provide that on the film for you in case you forgot it. We do have some upcoming holiday giveaways, so make sure you follow us and uh, check out Ch Tyler's Instagram because it does have a lot of motivating positivity uh, on there, which I enjoy personally. So thank you for joining us, and we will see you next Saturday on Go Country 105. And remember, let, let love rule. rule.